Hi, welcome to A Moment in Time with Taylor. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to check out our website, nextjuice.com. Click the support button and help us to keep this channel going and growing together. Thank you to every single person who has made this channel possible over the last 30 days. I am just realizing now that I got ready to go live and totally forgot to update this list. So my apologies to everyone who has supported over the last probably 48 hours because I haven't actually updated this list and I didn't, that didn't occur to me until just now. So apologies. There are more people than on this list and I love you so much just the same, even though I totally failed. <laughs> Today we're doing a book review. Hey Alex, yes, I am up early. We're doing this live as we always do. I am a live streamer and I'm trying to get this channel live 24 hours a day with positive, engaging content to help disconnected people to connect with a positive, engaging community through live streaming. And what I love to do is read. I love to live stream and I love to read. Hey Tommy. So I read a new book every single week. This is my 11th book of the year. Conscious Capitalism by John Mackey, who's the co-CEO of Whole Foods Market, and Raj Sisodia. So I'm going to be missing a lot of comments just so I can spit this out for our YouTube audience. I am live right now on YouTube and Periscope. Let me just make sure YouTube has a weird color on it. Why does it, it says the sh viewer, okay, there we go. Stream health seems better now, sorry. Um, hopefully the replay will be okay for the YouTubers. This is the book again. I'm a little bit confused about why this guy's name is on there. I don't know if maybe he was the editor or what, but the whole book seems to be written by John Mackey, so I'm not sure who this guy actually is. But, oh, someone, Matt just said that John Mackey lives in Austin, Texas. That's really cool. I didn't know that little tidbit about him. And this book was really good. I'm going to give this book five stars. And I read a lot of books. I've read now, this will be my 203rd book that I've read that's documented on my Goodreads channel. So you can go to goodreads.com slash nextjuice if you want to check that out. Or you can go to the website. You'll see the link on there. And you can also sign up for my free book reviews on the website as well, nextjuice.com. So I'm going to start out with reading a little intro from this book that really just kind of sums up the whole spirit of this book. And that's what it's called. Conscious Capitalism, Liberating the Heroic Spirit of Business. This really resonated with me a lot as a small business owner, as an entrepreneur. And I think that even people who aren't, it can definitely open your mind, change your mind, maybe if you have kind of a negative taste in your mouth towards business, or you think businesses are inherently evil or only driven by money. Uh, but this was really, it, it can, it sheds a lot of light on a lot of areas that you didn't learn about in school. We'll put it that way. In the long arc of history, no human creation has ever had a greater positive impact on more people more rapidly than free enterprise capitalism. It is unquestionably the greatest system for innovation and social cooperation that has ever existed. This system has afforded billions of us the opportunity to join in the great enterprise of earning our sustenance and finding meaning by creating value for each other. In a mere 200 years, business and capitalism have transformed the face of the planet and the complexion of daily life for the vast majority of people. Thank you, Mark, for the super hearts. The extraordinary innovations that have sprung from this system have freed so many of us from much of the mindless drudgery that has long accompanied ordinary existence and enabled us to lead more vibrant and fulfilling lives. Wondrous technologies have shrunk time and distance, weaving us together into a seamless fabric of humankind extending to the remotest corners of the planet. So much has been accomplished, yet much remains to be done. The promise of this marvelous system for human cooperation is far from being completely fulfilled. Too much of the world still has not embraced the core principles of free enterprise capitalism, and as a result, we are collectively far less prosperous and less fulfilled than we could be. Um, yeah, I'll read this last paragraph and then I'll, I'll give you the summary. <laughs> Lexi Lyons says that he likes the, the mindless drudgery. Much of the 20th century can be seen as an extended intellectual war between two diametrically opposed social and economic philosophies. One, free enterprise capitalism, free markets, and free people, good morning chicken, and communism, dictatorship, and governmental economic control, hey Alexis. By every objective measure, free enterprise capitalism has won this battle. The United States was far more economically dynamic and socially evolved than the Soviet Union, its chief communist rival. The same held true for West Germany versus East Germany, South Korea versus North Korea, and Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Singapore versus China. 
With the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, country after country began to turn toward greater political and economic freedom in the 1990s and 2000s, as the dismal economic and societal results of the various socialistic experiments conducted in the 20th century became better known. As this transition to greater freedom took root, many countries experienced rapid economic growth and hundreds of millions of poor people were able to escape grinding poverty. So he goes on to say that there are four tenets to conscious capitalism. I'm sorry, I know I'm missing a lot of comments. Hey, Cher. This is the only type of school I enjoy, she said. I love that. Hey, hey, everybody. Lexi Lyons says, give us a summary. I will, I will. I just wanted to kind of give you a vibe for, because he's, now I'm going to be honest. So we all have our own biases and opinions, right? So I am a free enterprise capitalist. And this guy who owns Whole Foods Market, for some reason, I thought, okay, it's a mega corporation and it's likely to be very liberal. This is, this was my it, this is what I, I figured going into this. I was automatically expecting to disagree with this guy. And I was really surprised that he wasn't pro-socialism and pro-governmental control and was talking, speaking the truth about how, what, they, what he calls in here, crony capitalism, when governments own the economic system and when governments basically are in the pockets of the big businesses who pay them to, you know, by, through lobbying to make laws that benefit only certain industries or only certain companies. And it, it, he goes in a lot of detail on this. So this book is 271 pages long. I'm not going to tell you every single thing that was in here. I could talk about this book for a really long time, but we've already been going for seven minutes and I know your time is valuable. So I'll tell you what the four tenets of conscious capitalism are according to this book. And then I'll go into a little description of each of those tenets. So first, there's the higher purpose. So the first tenet is having a higher purpose. The second tenet is stakeholder integration, realizing that all the stakeholders of your business are interconnected and interdependent. Third is conscious leadership. And fourth is conscious culture and management. So now I'll tell you what each of those four things means. First, he talks about higher purpose. And he talks about the difference between purpose, mission, and vision. So your purpose is the reason that you do what you do. It's the reason that your business exists. Your mission is what you do to accomplish that purpose. So for example, I'll use Next Juice, this network and channel as an example. Our purpose is to connect people who are disconnected to a positive and engaging community through live streaming. Our mission is to be live 24 hours a day so that we can accomplish that to the maximum potential. Finally, you have your vision and your vision is what that looks like, what that actually looks like when you achieve your purpose and, and really getting clear on that vision in as many details as possible so that you can actually create that. So for us, I can't be live 24 hours a day. That's I'm going to be asleep for eight of those hours. I'm going to be showering. I'm going to be eating. I'm going to be working with my stepkids and I'm not going to be able to really be engaging and I'm not positive 100% of the time. So what I can do, what I have been doing is hire on other content creators. So on our Periscope channel, there are now 15 of us that broadcast and we've only had this business for just over two years now. And now there are 15 of us that broadcast every single day, not I broadcast every single day. Most of them broadcast once a week and it's all positive and engaging content to achieve our purpose of being there, being live, being present and engaging with people who are feeling disconnected. And it could be, you could be feeling disconnected from people. You could be feeling disconnected from meaning, from purpose, disconnected from hope. You could be feeling disconnected from a lot of different things. And that's why I started this business because I used to feel really disconnected. I used to be really depressed, lonely, and I'm digressing about my own personal purpose, mission, and vision. Just to give you an example and an idea of what I'm talking about, what that really means and what the differences between the three are and how you have to have those three things if you are to be considered a conscious business according to the rules or of, of the, uh, the theories of John Mackey who wrote this book. He's the co-CEO of Whole Foods. Peter, <laughs> Peter's username is Peter Unplugged. He says, I feel unplugged more than disconnected. I love that. Hey, Peter. Um, that's why I'm streaming at 3am. Yeah, I, I'm kind of a night owl. I did take a little two hour nap. I finished reading this book. I was about halfway through when I woke up and then I finished it and I rewarded myself with a nap. 
<laughs> it's important to give yourself rewards when you accomplish a goal, I think. And it works really well for me. I do tend to accomplish most of my goals as well. So I'm a good person to listen to on that. Tenant number two, this is stakeholder integration, realizing that all of your stakeholders are interconnected and interdependent on one another. And there's two main groups that he talks about here. He has what he calls your inner circle of uh, your inner circle of stakeholders and your outer circle. Yeah, are you? Did you change your name, Pete Unplugged? You're from Sydney, but isn't there another Pete down in uh, Australia down there? So the the inner circle are your customers, your team members, your investors, your suppliers, your communities, and your environment. So I thought that was pretty cool. I think most of it, I read a lot of business books and you know, you hear a lot about your customers, your team members, uh, and your investors. I was actually, it kind of, this opened my mind in terms of suppliers who actually supplies things like for me, who supplies my merch. I use Spreadshirt. Well, I never really thought about the importance like, of, of them being a stakeholder in my business and the importance of our relationship and not just seeing what I can get from them. How can I get the most value for the lowest price, but also how can I create value for them? Maybe I can invite them on my channel and, and allow them to be in front of my 100,000 followers and uh, let them promote their business. Maybe that would create some value to them and, and just have more of a reciprocal relationship rather than seeing them as they supply me, they work for me. I, I would view them as, you know, they're a stakeholder in my business too. They actually want my business to do well because then their business does well. And when one of us does well, all of us do well. That's really the, the concept of free enterprise capitalism. Then communities was another one. We talk about that a lot here is we have a positive and engaging community. So it's not just our customers. It's not just the people that actually send money and keep the channel funded and growing, but the community in general, all of the viewers, um, even the trolls, <laughs> you know, we are an online community. We have that too. And that that's that the, these are all stakeholders in our business and they all have a reason to have our business do well. And then finally, is for the inner circle, is the environment. And with an internet community, I think we're pretty uh, lenient on the environment. But then I realized as I was reading this, I don't really know what kind of um, resources are being used up to make this stream possible, to get this to where you are watching this now. What happens to all of the phones after people are, have discarded them and gotten, done, gotten rid of them after we get the brand new phone? Where'd all those old phones go? What about all the servers that are used and um, to to basically make this possible all around the world? We have an international audience. Well, there's tons of servers. They have entire uh, basically buildings and warehouses full of servers to keep these things live and able to stream to you in a high quality format. What really impact does that have on the environment? I'm ignorant on that. So I realized, okay, you know what? I could learn more about that. And if you have resources for me about that, please let me know. It's because I, I love learning, learning more and, and trying to, uh, you know, make as little of an impact as necessary to achieve my purpose. Because obviously the environment serves all of us and it really does help us. And I am very attached to physical books, but I know that this uses paper and that there's some issues with deforestation and I may have to change my ways to make sure that that stakeholder of the environment, which is the only stakeholder that can't speak for themselves and can't actually tell me what it wants, is very important. And they actually consider it on the inner circle of our stakeholders. Stakeholders meaning like someone who has a, a stake in your business, so a reason to, to want your business to do well. And then on the outer circle, these are things that we don't often think about, competitors. So not viewing your competitor as, you know, either I get, you know, he talks about how ca true capitalism increases the size of the pie. It doesn't say, okay, well, here's the pie. If I take a bigger slice, you have to take a smaller slice, or we all should get the exact same slice. It says, hey, how can we increase the size of the pie? How can we create more abundance, more resources? How can we invent something new that the world has never had before and create all sorts of new opportunities, new jobs, new resources in general? Like with the, uh, with the invention of the light bulb, with the invention of the rocket ship. I mean, there's so many things that have completely changed the way that the world operates and created more rather than just working with the same preset notions that we had in the beginning. 
there was a quote from Gandhi, something where someone told him that, you know, nonviolence has never worked throughout history, so therefore it won't work when he does it. And it was a his historian, someone whose job it was to document history. He was an expert in history. And Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi said to him, your job is to write history. My job is to make it or to, to change it or to create history, something along those lines. And I thought that was really insightful. So you have your competitors. So you view them as, you know, they, they do well when you do well. And if they're doing something better than you're doing, learn from them. You know, he, he talks about in here that when you're in the same industry as another business, we're all in some way kind of imitating each other. And to see something that someone's doing that's working really well for their, for their company, for their customers, for their team members, why not adapt it for what works with your company? You know, why do you have to view anything that's not your own idea as wrong or bad or, you know, or, or a threat to you? So I have to work on that personally myself. Activists and critics, another one that I have to work on, we could call that trolls on the internet, realizing that, trying to acknowledge their separate reality. That for some reason, what they're saying and doing makes sense to them. Try to put ourselves in their shoes, be empathetic, and realize that they're actually a stakeholder in our business as well. You know, they, they are influenced by whether or not our business is successful. Really, Mark said there's a city in Japan that appears totally black from satellites. Interesting. Then we have um, labor unions, the government, and media. So media, this one really spoke to me, so I do want to share this with you guys as well. I apologize, this one is going a little long. I knew it would. I loved this book a lot. Hopefully you're still with me here. So if you've ever had any bad media, which I have with this company, um, believe it or not, and I've struggled with that before, and reading this really helped me to realize, right, people in the media are people who have history in media, this is this is them this is what they are used to this is their like how they were trained so not to to realize where they're coming from it helps me to be more empathetic the media tends to focus and report on the three c's controversy conflict and change it sometimes spins things to make them seem controversial and looks for conflict where there isn't any Many people have lost trust in the media because they think it is no longer honest with them, but is more interested in spinning a story or engaging in entertainment or sensationalism to attract a larger audience. And I've had, I've definitely had that in my experience. So if, if you're dealing with that too, just realize it's the nature of the beast. Um, that's what they get incentivized to do. And that all we can do is hope for a raised consciousness for all of us. The media's main purpose should be, in my opinion, and in the opinion of John Mackey, CEO of Whole Foods, to present the truth. To present the truth, even if it's really boring and uninteresting and positive, <laughs> uh, but not to sensationalize the facts and embellish and, and make up some of your own facts and kind of like put your own biases on there as much as possible. We're all humans, no one's perfect. And there's miscommunications and, and bad information out there. So it's not like we can expect any perfection from anyone. At the same time, truth is, should be the main goal of media. And we've really, really wandered away from that. So if your business is a victim of that right now, just know that it can change. That is, as humans, we're always elevating our consciousness. And as a society, we're doing the same thing. Yeah, Rook Rabbit said media has always been like that since the newspaper was invented. And then uh, the last part here. We have conscious leadership and conscious culture and management. Okay. Leadership and management are not synonymous. Leadership is mostly about change and transformation. Management is about efficiency and implementation. Leaders are the high-level architects, builders, and remodelers of the system, while managers ensure that the system works smoothly and take corrective actions when it doesn't. Leaders have an inherent systemic sensitivity that enables them to understand both how a group of people will behave as a system and how to change the system in order to change its behavior. As Harvard Business School professor John Cotter puts it, quote, too much management without enough leadership leads to too much stability and inward focus. This eventually results in stagnation, decline, and probably the death of the organization. 
Too much leadership without enough management is also dangerous. The company lacks organizational capacity, operational discipline and efficiency, and the business can become very risky. So he says that it's important for both leaders and management, well, really, we'll, we'll start with leaders, to have high IQ, that most leaders do have high IQ, that's analytical intelligence. And unfortunately, once you reach adulthood, studies seem to point out that IQ doesn't change a whole lot. It's a little bit, it's, it's, of, of all these things we're going to discuss, types of intelligence, analytical intelligence is the hardest to increase and grow once you hit adult, adulthood. Thanks, Peter. I'm glad you like it. Me too. Hey, you, you were over on YouTube and Periscope, weren't you? Um, emotional intelligence. Please check out some of my previous videos. They are, I've done a bunch of reading about emotional intelligence lately. My favorite was The EQ Difference by Adele B. Lynn. So really, really interesting talking about self-awareness, empathy, uh, acknowledging people's separate realities. That was actually a concept from a book called Accountability Now. Lots and lots of great stuff about emotional intelligence out there. You can look it up. There's a test you can take on psychologytoday.com. It's uh, you can take it for free, and then you can get detailed results on your on your emotional intelligence for like ten bucks, nine ninety five. And I don't get anything if you go do that. So feel free to do that if you like. Um, SQ, which is spiritual intelligence. This is uh, knowing the difference between right and wrong, having a sense of morals, having a sense again of higher purpose, staying connected to meaning. And then system, systemic intelligence, S-Y-Q. I don't know if it's Psy-Q. I feel like that sounds cooler, but <laughs> um, realize, realizing the interconnectedness of systems and keeping big picture in, in mind at all times. So the best leaders and the most conscious leaders are going to have all four of those types of intelligence. IQ, which is hard to develop once you reach adulthood, but these other three can be developed, and there's a lot of different ways you can do that, and he discusses a lot of different ways in the book. So EQ, SQ, and PsyQ, or SYQ. That's emotional intelligence, uh, spiritual intelligence, and system systemic or systematic intelligence, knowledge of systems. And then finally, to have a conscious culture and management. So culture is like your entire organization, your whole community, everyone that's involved, all the stakeholders and the managers, which are very important because they're kind of in charge of keeping everything running smoothly and, and going according to the plans that the leaders pass down from their high levels of intelligence. So the, the mnemonic, the acronym that you can use to help you remember this is tactile. And tactile means that you can feel it. So it's, it's kind of easy to remember that, hopefully. And the what tactile stands for is you need to have these seven components in order to have the best possible culture and a conscious culture. Trust, accountability, caring, transparency, integrity, loyalty, and egalitarianism. I'll repeat that one last time. Trust accountability, caring, transparency, integrity, loyalty, and egalitarianism. So that is how you're going to have the most conscious culture. Those are the four tenets of conscious capitalism as taught in this book by John Mackey. Higher purpose, stakeholder integration, conscious leadership, and conscious culture and management. Really great book. If you're an entrepreneur, I definitely recommend that you read that one. It'll It'll give you some hope that things can change and hopefully that we can see more freedom and more of a free enterprise capitalism, not just in the States, but all around the world, especially in areas with really serious poverty. And there's so much more to this. So egalitarianism means that um, it's, it's like equality. So for Whole Foods, they have their executives. In a small business, it's easier to do this because you don't usually have you know, big gaps in, in income and in, in what people are being paid and benefits that they receive. But in a larger company, in the corporate America of today, executives can make somewhere from four to 500 times what their average uh, salary of an employee is. And at Whole Foods, they've set a cap on that. So their top seven executives can only ever make up to 19 times as much as the average salary of their workers so that it's considered fair. They also have something in Whole Foods where it's complete transparency. So everyone is allowed to know what every single person makes in terms of 
salary in terms of benefits there's no like secretiveness or no we don't tell you because we're worried so that way they can get feedback to know if someone thinks something is unfair and they can always adjust it so okay well you think it's unfair this person makes more than you they can evaluate that and say okay maybe you should be making more or maybe that person shouldn't be making as much and and try to keep it clear and try to keep it so that everybody is in agreement that it's fair and equal, you know, not equal, like everyone's getting the same amount of money, but that it's a reasonable amount and that people are viewed as, it's not like a secret from the underlings, what the larger big top executives are making. So that's kind of what he talks about. And his words are probably much more eloquent than mine, but that's what I took from it. So I hope you enjoyed this book review. Remember, my name's Taylor. I love this channel, nextjuice.com. If you loved this review and other content that we've done, please help us to keep this going and growing. You can send as little as five bucks over at the website nextjuice.com by clicking support. I also have a group of people right now, I think there's 17 of us that meet once a month for one hour virtually on Skype and we explore different ideas, goals, our progress, our achievements, areas we need support on, and I call it our mastermind group. And you can get into that for $25 by clicking shop. So nextjuice.com, click shop. And if you just go to the website, you can sign up totally for free for my book reviews. I do them right now. I send out only three a year. It's three emails that you get from me all year long, and it'll have something about 16 book reviews on each one. I'm considering maybe um, increasing the amount of emails that I send so that you're getting less books all at once, because I find that people might have a hard time reading 16 book reviews at once because I do read a new book every single week and sometimes I, it gets bunched up so maybe there'll be 10 on one and then like 30 on another one so um, I'm just trying to work that out the best as possible but if you'd like to see those book reviews you can go to nextjuice.com and sign up you can also go to goodreads.com slash nextjuice and see all of my reviews all the books that I've read all the books that I want to read you can give me uh, suggestions and advice criticism even uh, by contacting me on any social media platform twitter Instagram. Well, I'm not on Facebook, so really Twitter or Instagram at nextjuice, or you can even email me nextjuice at gmail.com. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I am going to be back in just a little while with some ASMR. I'll be whisper reading some grim fairy tales. I'll be playing with my rain stick, tapping with my fingernails. Hopefully they're long enough right now, and that can help maybe put you to sleep, help you to relax. It helps people with a lot of different things, so that's just a little bit of the content we provide on here. Feel free to go through our read plays and see what you like. And feel free to leave a comment. Please like this video if you're watching on YouTube and subscribe to the channel. Follow if you're on Periscope. And big, big thank you to our Super Heart contributor, Mark Gage, for the Super Hearts on this broadcast. I really appreciate that. Mark is also a monthly sponsor of this channel. I hope you guys have a wonderful night, a wonderful day. And I'll be back in just a little while with some ASMR. This has been a moment in time with Taylor. Thanks for watching. See you on the next juice. And you guys on YouTube, I ended the Periscope video because I can't promote this while I have Super Hearts turned on. I just want to remind you, if you do go to nextjuice.com and click the support button, if you subscribe for monthly sponsorships, you'll be entered to win $100 every 17th of the month. So thank you so much to everyone who supports on a monthly basis. That helps us out hugely to budget and plan out. We don't use Patreon. We just go straight through PayPal. Really, really easy to cancel. And... If, so if your financial situation changes, you can cancel, you can decrease your amount, you can increase your amount, whatever works best for you. Huge thank you to everybody that makes this channel possible. Our next $100 giveaway is St. Patrick's Day, March 17th, 2019, and I hope to see you there. This has been A Moment in Time with Taylor again. See you on the next juice.